and Margaret and Windsor and I let me undo this so, so I can hold it up. Um <laughs> trouble with my phone. Uh it's about eight ten at tonight and today's the third of December. And I just put up here about me going uh down to Kroger today and um what happened when I left. I bought a few groceries, etc. It's when I left, I get um, my, the only thing I can get now is a uh, taxi, and it's uh, LOA pays um, uh, most of it. I pay $5.50, I think, uh, each month toward each um, trip. I can, well, I'm putting this up just to tell you as information. They pay as many times as, and I have to pay that part, as many times as I need to go to the doctor, or if I have to go for medicine. Uh, but then it's, anyway, that's all I'm going to put up. I can go to the grocery store once or twice. Uh, but then that gets confusing because I, I'm not even going to go into it. It's like this, uh, nightmare that you wish you could wake up from how uh anyway the reason i'm putting this up is when i left and i was sitting here's the deal you can see if there's any connection or what i'm sitting out there waiting on the taxi now here's what happens loa gets me a cab through yellow cab and i have to say most of the years since i've been here yellow cab has been nice to me uh, on a whole they have. And then there's been another gentleman here that owns cab service, and they were nice. But LOA um, uh, gives me the taxi service is provided through Yellow Cab. And, um, and the service to the elderly, me, my God, I'll be 80 years old. Next month now, January. As far as I know, for someone who wants to <laughs> make a crack about that, uh, excuse me, but I don't feel good at all. <laughs> um, pardon me. Anyway, I um, the service is LOA provides is a number, yellow cab number out at... Um, the Roanoke Airport here, and they have a certain, I found out today, limited, well, I don't know limited, a certain amount of taxis and et cetera that they send out, and they're always real nice uh, cabs, and usually cab service too, taxi service. And the reason I'm putting this up today, um, I'm sitting there, I'd call uh, the cab company, and they were sending someone after me. And let me remind you here that when you get a cab, when they come and pick you up, it's not always the driver that comes back and gets you. Same driver. And you have to sign a ticket for going and then one for coming back. So usually, uh, it's my understanding, I, you don't look at it. It's a standard thing. They hand you on a clip and, a, and it's got... Um, uh, they filled it out, you know, and want you to sign it that so they can get paid. So um, today, I, I, it was kind of cold, but it's, I don't want to miss the cab, okay? Uh, so I, I'm sitting out there, and it's hard to, um, well, you just about have to uh, get outside to see the cab. Not that he would go off and leave me, but anyway, it's just better that way. Uh, I'm sitting there, and this black lady, I'm putting this here because this was the oddity. I don't know if she fits in in any way. There, uh, there's got to be cameras or something that caught this. Uh, I'm sitting there, and I was looking back at my phone trying to see the timeline here that it happened because I, I don't know what time I came out, and there was people going, uh, Salvation Army, uh, thing was there, and they were putting money in it. So it was going in and out of the grocery store. It was busy. And uh, 
I sit there for a little bit in this, I'm sitting in the uh, remote controlled uh, cart that, you know, that elderly use with the, uh, to get their groceries and get around. And I can't uh, get up and stand or anything, and I've got to get the cab. So I'm in nobody's way. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm sitting there, and this black woman comes up, and she, I don't, she was well dressed, presented herself well, as you know, and she come up and like uh, asked me about something about the the vehicle I'm on. I don't know what you call it. It's riding card or something. And I said, well, I've called a cab, and it may be a bit till he gets here or they get here. And uh, I said, oh. First of all, I didn't know why I'm the only one on a car. They have several, several. And finally she left and she come back and she left and she come back. And I thought, well, she can't need this for herself. It must be her mom or someone an elderly that I didn't see. There was no one around. This is outside. So I thought, well, I don't know where she would be on the inside either, but there is a spot she could sit. And she kept coming back, though, and I said, well, I tell you what, you should go to customer service because um, the uh, people leave carts like this uh, out at their cars in the parking lot, and they have to go collect them, just like they do the other grocery carts. She said, well, that's a good idea. So she goes in. She keeps coming back, and I'm sitting there. I don't really know how long I sat there. Uh, you know, 45 minutes, I would think, at the most. And um, she comes back several times. So finally, she walks up to me. And um, I look, and I had called from a taxi. And I see the taxi uh, pull up in, right in front of me. It's coming in front of me. It's got Roanoke Airport uh, on it. And I said to her, I said, well, um, I've got, uh, a, a couple, three bags, four uh, paper bags with the few groceries in it. I don't can't afford to get that much, and I really wouldn't have anywhere to put it if I did. Uh, anyway, I said, um, you can have it. Here comes my ride. So she says, you want me to help you put them in uh, the taxi? And it's, it said airport limo on it, taxi. And I had seen this uh, vehicle before a couple of times the last. In fact, I think this person may have last month have uh, picked me up or dropped me off at uh, the grocery store, uh, Kroger, same Kroger, Hollins, Williamson Road. Anyway, she, I, I said, just uh, uh, put it in the back seat and scoot it over if you don't, if you don't mind. And I said, thank you. It's very nice of you. And well, he got out, the driver got out and he opened the trunk real quick. Whatever this has got to do with it, they don't usually do that because I don't have that much. It's just put in the back seat with me or on the floor there. And um, so she, uh, she put uh, the bag she had, and uh, he picked up the other, you know, they put him in the back. And I remember she, I got in the back seat of the, uh, it It was almost like it was his private car, uh, not one that is by the limo, uh, sent by the cab service. But, I mean, this driver, I had an incident with him. I don't know, I, I think I've ridden, where he was the driver about four or five, uh, let's say five times that I'm aware of. And believe me, I'd be aware of this. I won't say a word. There's not one bad enough to call him, the sicko. Anyway, back some time ago, I don't know if it's last year when I had vertigo and I, uh, anyway, the, he wasn't in a vehicle, which now today they tell me that uh, the drivers can't use their own vehicle. So I, who am I getting when I call a cab? This man came up. I got in the in his 
it was a vehicle that was more, and it wasn't a new one. It was more like, I don't know, it had a inner thing in the, uh, between the driver and me over here. I, I don't know, it, it was his own vehicle. I did not know that they didn't use their own vehicles. Uh, anyway, I got in, and this sorry sot, uh, started groping me. And I scooted over as far as I could. It's where I was that it would have been very tough to get out and, you know, at that time, get out and, and uh, yell for help or something. So I let it go. I think I did say something about it, but nothing, you know, nothing's ever done. I didn't file any complaint. What good would it have done me? Look at all the things that have been done to me. Not one person has been charged in it. In fact, it'd be me that got charged, and I'm not kidding you either. So now then, this guy, I just, when I saw him the few times he picked me up, I just didn't say anything to him very much. Hi, uh, you know, that's it. And the thing here is you have to sign that ticket for them to get paid. Now, he had this on him today, and I signed it. So somebody had to pay for my ride back. So that ought to... Uh, because LOA, they send a ticket to LOA, and LOA pays it, and I pay my share to LOA. So somebody must know who picked me up there. It should be on uh, camera or something there at Kroger. I still think there was something about the woman that kept coming back, and she even sat down, and she's a young woman, sitting on this that's meant for the elderly. She got on it, and she said, well, how do I work it as I'm getting in the taxi? Duh. I don't know. She may have had nothing to do with this. It was just odd, considering what happened. I got in the taxi, the back of it, pulled off, and anybody that can follow me here that knows the area, uh, we went from Kroger Hollins down to Plantation Road, and took a left, and we didn't get very far uh, up Plantation Road. He was playing music on the radio in front, and uh, suddenly, I you know, I, I have detested when he was the driver the few times, because he's an evil person, really. He shouldn't be driving a cab. Um. Anyway, I the last thing I was I remember was he switched the music from up front at his radio suddenly back to the back seat and it's blaring and it's a song that made me so sick I wanted to throw up and I thought you evil per and that's the last thing I remember so I don't don't ask me can't you. Can't you see me filing a complaint with the cops or with LOA or with Yellow Cab? Because I tried to with Yellow Cab after I got back and I could hardly talk. Um, this was playing. The next thing I know is I was coming, which would take from Hollins out there, I would think it'd take you 10 minutes to get from. Uh, Plantation Road at the beginning of it almost up here to um, uh, Sheridan Drive uh, where I live. And the next thing I know was we're down there on uh, just got on Plantation Drive off of Williamson Road not too far from the supermarket. Last thing I remember was the music blaring and there was an odor in there, smell. Um, I came to, and that's all I can say, I came to as he pulled around the highway out here up on this drive that it ends here where I live. And I remember suddenly something, uh, you know, and I thought, what's happened? I'm here. I was just out there. How did I get here so quick? I even made the comment to him, and I didn't realize what had happened. Uh, wh what, did I just float up there? I was out there at one minute and here the next. So something was wrong. 
he parked in front, and uh, I told him park in front. He's a sliding glass door, and I told him because I knew I was feeling something, something was wrong. And I told him just to put my groceries in front of the uh, sliding glass door, and I I would come in and open the door, and I'd pick them up and bring them in. So uh, I thanked him. I came in, and uh, I opened the sliding glass door, and he was still sitting there. And he blinked his lights. He turned his lights on and blinked them. So you take what you want to from that. This is daylight, there, and it's not raining it's not cloudy so he did deliberately as some sort of ha huh, gotcha i don't know what he did um uh, <laughs> anyway my glasses were gone and believe me my glasses i put in my purse and i wrapped them up uh in a wrap so they don't well they wouldn't break they've been pretty darn good over the years they're old and i need gl uh, new glasses but they're all i have right at the moment uh, and I can't read anything small. So I got in, and I have to, I had to hurry to try to get my phone card. I have a prepaid phone card, and my uh, time was going to be cut off about noon today. And it was about noon then I happened to look. Um, well, I don't, I don't know if I looked at it. I knew a uh, clock. I knew I had to get back and uh, put the card on, prepaid on. And... I uh, couldn't find my glasses, and it, my eyes were so blurred, I could not see. I went up front to the desk, and I took the prepaid card, because I couldn't see the call, the numbers in, and I asked the lady at the desk to help me. I told her something had happened, and I used the phone to call, um, uh, I used my phone standing there to call the uh, limo service that, uh, provides this to LOA, the service to the elderly. And I tried to talk to her, and I suppose she was busy and everything, but, you know, in this whole mess that has happened to me, it's take this little unconcern, you know. Uh, I tried to tell her that I wanted to file a complaint against this guy, but what am I really going to tell about him, you know, because I don't even remember what happened other than the, the music that blasted me in the back suddenly from his front radio and me literally passing out and smelling there. Now then, I, um, I still don't know what happened. Something knocked me out, and I didn't have anything after I left here. I had coffee at breakfast here. I don't even think I had a drink of water before I left. Um to go to the grocery store. I, did, I went to the grocery store, the bathroom there. I had nothing to drink whatsoever. So I don't know. So I said to her at the desk, I said, uh, now I'm not going to call the cops. They wouldn't do anything any, anyway to help me on the, any of this. I've been this route before with all that's happened to me. And maybe there's some good cops who help me live. But as a whole, I can't file a complaint against anybody or do anything. Uh, nobody has been held accountable for anything that's happened to me and my children here. Ongoing. And believe me, they'd topple a pyramid. Um, so anyway, I'm, I, I'm knowing that something's wrong. I'm groggy, kind of, and my eyes are just so blurred. And I remember to, I went up there to get her to call the number to the prepaid because I couldn't read it. I couldn't find my glasses. They weren't in my purse. And um, anyway, she wrote the number down for me, uh, I believe is how she did it. So when I got back here, it was big enough that I called the number. And I got it. Uh, by the way, I couldn't. Yeah, I kept trying to give the number to her on 